everyone tomorrow night at the Seder we'll go through the 15 steps of the order of the Seder someone said the word God stands for godly orderly direction there is a direction an order to the Seder and step number four is yachatz we break the middle matzah and we hide the bigger portion for the afikomen which is the final dessert that we will eat in commemoration of the special pascha lamb that we ate when we left Egypt. And there's an interesting correlation between step number four, breaking the middle matzah, and step number 12, which is tzafun. Tzafun means the hidden matzah. We search the afikomen, especially the children, and it's a custom many times to give them a reward for finding the afikomen. And we find the hidden matzah that we hid at step number four, after we broke the middle matzah and we eat it as the last taste of the evening. And there's a very deep spiritual psychological message here. And that is that sometimes in life, precisely where you feel broken, precisely where you feel you are weakest, your greatest struggles in life are precisely where the greatest treasures and light is hidden. That's right, yachatz precisely where our brokenness lies, our greatest hardships in life, is the key to unlocking our most hidden safun treasure. What we broke is what we search and discover for. And it is precisely the challenges we face in life that force us to seek and find a deeper dimension of ourselves that we could have never uncovered that hidden layer had we not experienced that challenge. I remember that there's another interpretation to this idea, and that is that we know that in the morning before the sun rises is precisely when it's darkest. And the idea is where you experience the brokenness, don't despair, because you know what? You may just discover that precisely when you thought all was lost and hopeless, that's precisely when you discovered the greatest light, the greatest redemption and liberation in your life. When things may seem they're at their worst, could precisely be when they're about to be transformed into the greatest source of freedom in your life. And therefore, like the Jews in Egypt, who were enslaved for 210 years and had fallen into a very low state spiritually, and psychologically and emotionally, precisely then Moses came and redeemed them from slavery. And everyone in our own lives should never lose hope. We should know yachatz, where we're broken. When we feel the greatest pain and shame and sadness in our life, precisely could be the beginning, the seeds of redemption, of tzafun, a great hidden revelation that is about to occur. I had a personal story when I was a rabbinic intern in Melbourne, Australia we were invited, my friend and I, to go to Tasmania. I'm sorry, I went to Tasmania on the high holidays. We were invited to go to Wellington, New Zealand to conduct a Passover Seder for many Russian immigrants that had come there. This was in the 1992. And my friend Srili Hecht and I, we traveled to Wellington, New Zealand with matzah and wine and provisions, and we stayed in the local synagogue there and we started to advertise a Passover Seder for all the Jews who didn't have a Seder, especially all the Russian immigrants that had come. And very few people were signing up and we were very disappointed. Why weren't people coming to our Seder? But then we discovered that there was a Jews for Jesus organization and there was an individual there who called himself a rabbi who reached out to all the Russian Jews year round and would conduct a special Passover Seder for them which of course was not a Jewish Seder. But these Russian Jews came from Russia from behind the Iron Curtain and they thought they were going to a proper Seder. And when we started to meet with these families to invite them to our Seder, they all said, well, we're going to that Seder because this individual who was Christian but called himself a rabbi looks after us all year round. And so we were really in a state of despair. What are we gonna do? We're not gonna have many people at our own Seder. And then we discovered who runs the Seder? There was this Russian family that had come from Russia to New Wellington, New Zealand, and they became successful and they opened a restaurant. 
and this fellow would run the Seder in their restaurant. So we said, you know what, let's go talk to him. Maybe we could convince him not to have the Seder. We drove to the restaurant. When we walked in, the elderly Russian man behind the counter looks at us. He sees us with our yarmulkes and our tzitzis, and he says to us in Yiddish, Ge baltaros, leave immediately. Which means I won't have any customers tomorrow if you guys are hanging out at my restaurant. But well, we came to talk to him, we weren't ready to leave. So we started saying, we just want to talk to you for a few minutes. He said, if you don't leave, I'm going to go call my grandson. And he marched off to the back, and we were thinking, we're about to get thrown out of this restaurant. But we're about to, you know, all our hopes were dashed. All of a sudden, a tall young man walks out from the back in his 20s. His name was Boris, he was about our age. And when he comes closer to me, he says, Maishi Shiner? I'm like, yes, how does this... Russian young man in Wellington, New Zealand, know my name. And then he said, I remember you from Yeshiva. And yes, I suddenly remember him. You see, I learned on Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn. And there were a lot of Russian immigrants in the 80s that came to America. And our Yeshiva, our school, opened a division on the fourth floor for Russian students. And while we were in different classrooms, we played ball together, we ate lunch together, and we actually knew each other. And suddenly we were friends in Wellington, New Zealand. And the grandfather was looking amazed as we sat down and started to talk about the problem that this Christian uh, quote-unquote rabbi was inviting people to a Seder with non-kosher food and talking about you-know-who rather than Moshe Rabbeinu. And he understood the problem and he explained it to his grandfather and they decided that they would not have the Seder, but rather they would participate in ours. And from that year on, the Jewish community, the Russian Jewish community in Wellington, New Zealand, would come to a Seder that our school would host every year. And that taught me a very powerful lesson. Just when you think you're about to get thrown out, there's no way out of this situation. It's a mess. The situation looks hopeless. Suddenly, where there's brokenness, there's a hidden light that is revealed. And we never know when God is going to step into our lives and turn things around and create redemption and freedom. Have a wonderful day.